Several weeks ago, I showed you guys how to build a beetleway combat robot frame without CNC tools. It works, but the result is kind of ugly. Today, let's fix that. Welcome everybody. If we haven't met before, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. I am, but I should say I'm the creator of Team Rocket Robotics because it's this kind of a video. And sitting over here is the current iteration of Micro Flash Delta, my three pound combat robot. And I'm getting ready to build all the final parts for the final revision of this version of the robot. And I really want the aluminum frames to look better than what I've, they've been looking. Because like I said, this whole process I've been using, it works, but it's kind of ugly. So today I got a solution for you and it only requires you to violate manufacturing recommendations once. More on that safety issue in a little bit. But let's take a look here first of all at the things you're going to need. Oh, and one quick thing before I dive into that. Um, this video is sort of built on the previous video. Some of the steps that I did in the previous video I'm not going to go over here. So I will reference where those are, and you don't have to watch that video before you watch this one, but there will be a link in the show notes for that video. So when we're done here, you can drive back over there to look at the few areas in that video that are kind of relevant to this situation. So let's run through what you need for the build. Now this is the, one of the few things that is from the other video, and this is your jigsaw cutout template. I talk about how you build this in the previous video. Once again, link in the show notes. The new thing you need here is a 3D printed structure of your robot or the pieces being cut out, but it's actually a lot thicker than it should be. So I'm working with eighth inch aluminum and this piece here is about a half inch thick. Next up, the bulk of the work is gonna be done with a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Now I prefer cordless jigsaws, but that's just a convenience thing. You can get away with your run of the mill average fairly cheap jigsaw if that's all that you have. Now, of course, we've got a cordless drill, drilling a few things out from time to time, that's important. I have the piece of material here that I'm working on. Now, important to note, this video is only for aluminum. Um, the safety recommendation I'll talk about in a moment here, you can kind of get away with the aluminum, probably not steel, and I'm almost certainly not titanium, that would probably be a pretty bad idea. And now we get to the magic here, which is this cordless router. Now you can use any kind of handheld router. I, once again, cordless tools are kind of convenient. And the real trick in here is what's called a flush trim bit. The flush trim bit is a router bit that has a cutting piece at the top and then it has a bearing at the bottom. Now this is designed such that nothing smaller than the diameter of the bearing will get removed during the cutting process. So if we go back to your thick template here, the idea is the bearing is gonna run along this frame and remove any material that is outside the frame on something above it. So your aluminum piece is gonna rest on top here and the cutting bit's gonna remove everything that's basically wider than the area of the frame that it's currently attached to. Now the big concern here is the flush trim bit like I'm working with here is a wood cutting tool. The manufacturer does not recommend this tool be used on metal. That being said, it's fairly common for woodworking tools to be used on soft metals like aluminum, but it's definitely a no-go on steel and things harder than aluminum. And even then, like I just mentioned, you're violating the recommendations of the manufacturer. So <laughs> be very careful with this process and it's basically do this at your own risk because like I said, you're violating manufacturer recommendations. And <laughs> to be honest with you, you're building a combat robot. <laughs> you haven't violated manufacturer recommendations. Well, good for you, but you probably have. But like everything about combat robotics, this is one more thing that's kind of dangerous. So once again, the liability is on you, not me. You do this at your own risk. <laughs> okay, so with that out of the way, let's start the process. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Before I start the process, one more important thing you need over here, and it's another shameless self-promotion thing because a video on this, you need a jigsaw table. Um, it's basically a wooden frame here, the giant hole cut in the middle or assembled whatnot. Link in the show notes how to build this particular frame here because I have a video on it and it makes using a jigsaw with a robotic combat frame so much easier. And of course clamps too, but that's kind of assumed, right? <laughs> Step one is to apply some spray adhesive to the aluminum and glue your cutting template down. To 
The spray adhesive only holds the template down temporarily. We need to secure it in place with bolts that go through some holes in the frame. So taking your automatic center punch, mark the spots where you're gonna drill for those holes and then drill them out using your drill. Next up, we're gonna use a countersink bit to countersink each of these holes. That way the bolt's gonna sit equal to or below the 3D printed cutting template. If it didn't, we'd have problems with the jigsaw. Now for the next bit of this build process, we're gonna follow pretty much what we did in the previous video, so you can go back there for details. But what I'm gonna be doing a little bit differently this time is I don't need to cut exactly along the template and get a nice clean cut. I can leave maybe about a millimeter material off the actual size of the frame. We'll clean that up a little bit later. So you've roughly cut out your structure piece here with the jigsaw. Now it's time to jump over to a router to clean it up. So what you're gonna do, remove the small bolts that are holding the cutting template onto the piece of aluminum. You're gonna replace them with longer bolts, keep the cutting template on, and then you're gonna screw on the thick version of your structure piece to the bottom of the aluminum. Now you're keeping the cutting template on there because that has the countersunk screw holes to it. Now, of course, if you're gonna go ahead and countersink your frame, you can do that now and get rid of that piece. But if not, leave it on there because just like with the jigsaw, you want the screws to be at or below the level of the template. Now, at this point, we're gonna start using the router to clean things up. And if you have not done so yet, you wanna put on a dust mask. So the jigsaw kind of chunks aluminum and throws bits of aluminum around. This thing will vaporize it. <laughs> and you will get a cloud of aluminum in the air and it's just, you don't want to breathe that in, no. The next thing you need to do is adjust the depth of the flush trim bit on your router. So without, let's see, without even having a battery in your router, you can go ahead and put your router down on the piece you're going to cut and you want to make sure that the bearing, if I hold it up here, you want to make sure the bearing is going to run along the thick 3D printed structure piece on the bottom. That way, you'll have this bottom piece here will be the guide for what to cut and what to not cut away. We're gonna take this thing back over to the jigsaw table and use the router to cut it out. Now one important detail with the routers is they have a certain direction they like to go around the piece that's being cut out. For what direction that is, be sure to consult the manual of the router. It'll tell you which is the best way to go around the piece. So let's get this apart here. We're gonna take off our templates and what we eh. and what we should be left with is another fairly clean aluminum frame. Now the one downside of this method is that the router can't cut sharp interior corners. So I know that may be an issue, maybe not. But if you want to get that cleaned up, just go ahead and you can use the file and you should be all set. Well, on the topic of cleaning up, I got quite the job ahead of me, so thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocker Robotics. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, and if you want more robotic combat videos, hit that subscribe button as well. And other things, of course, I may get back to some Warhammer Age of Sigmar miniature painting. We'll see how many thumbs down last week's video gets. But until then, thanks for watching, and have a great week.